I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called uh, well, the Deer Leap Enclosure. It's uh, just to the south of Ashurst on the eastern side of the New Forest. We've got uh, Southampton over to the east on the other side of Southampton Water. And we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile circular walk through some quite glorious woodland over some stunning heathland. We're going to be exploring a couple of very intriguing earthworks and I expect we'll be coming across a few other interesting things along the way. So do come along with us. Now I'm filming at the beginning of December. It's a beautiful winter's day. The sun is out at the moment. A few clouds about, but there's a lot of blue sky. It is bitterly cold, sir. so we're, we're quite well wrapped up. Are we ready? <laughs> He's seen something already. Let's go. Well, I've parked my car at the Forestry Commission car park by the Deer Leap enclosure. It's just opposite the main entrance to the New Forest Wildlife Park. It's a popular attraction. Do check out their website. Unfortunately, they don't allow dogs, so we're going to give that a miss and kick on with our walk. Just to show you where we've uh, come from, we've been basically following the side of the Deer Leap enclosure, come down the track there, and we're now shortly going to go inside the enclosure itself. It's actually a very good walk to do in the winter because a fair part of uh, the route's going to be on cycle tracks, so the ground's going to be nice and hard. <music> Now one of the great things about uh, following cycle tracks is uh, they've got plenty of cycle posts with numbers on them so uh, it means you're not going to get lost. So to get into the deer leap enclosure we come through, uh, well the post is 376 and then just behind me here we've got post 375 and we want to start heading right so you're almost double backing on yourself and heading along this track here. Well, as you can see, as we're coming through Deer Leap, it's well, predominantly uh, conifer and uh, dominated at the ground level by bracken. I know it can be a bit of a, a thug because when it dies, it just sort of flops over and creates this thatch on the ground and very little else can grow through. But having said that, at this time of year, the, um, the colour, that really golden almost deep brown colour in the sunshine does look very attractive. Now this is a very important post to look out for if you're going to be doing this walk post 385. So we're not going to carry on heading northwards instead we're going to head west down that track there towards the church place enclosure. Well folks, we're now going to start to do some exploring to see if we can find the remains of a royal hunting lodge. Now regular viewers will know that uh, we've come across a few of these in previous walks. Some of them are easier to find than others. Now these were structures that were built, uh, well a lot of them were built in the 14th century and they were basically temporary accommodation for uh, royalty or nobility uh, while they were out hunting in the forest and they were fairly simple structures made of wood with slate roofs and they would have been surrounded by a, a bank and a ditch. 
Obviously there's nothing left of the actual buildings, but in most cases you can still work out so where the earthworks are. So let's see if we can uh, find them. Well, I have got a map with me. I will put it up on screen, but this is the cycle track that we've come down. Um, and then there's a little track that goes to the side. And there's a couple of little gate posts or what looked like gate posts there. So the hunting lodge should be round about here. So it should be straightforward to find. So there are the sort of, whatever you'd call them, gate posts with a track to the side as the sun temporarily goes in. So if I've got this right, the earthworks should be somewhere up here. And we might have to fight our way through some some holly, but it doesn't look too bad. I think we're going to be okay. Ah, oh, now this looks uh, promising. There's a little clearing high up on a raised area. And yes, here we are. There's definitely some, some banking that goes along the side there. It was a sort of, well, semi-rectangular shape. I think it was 35 metres um, from north to south and 45 metres from east to west. And uh, yeah, a little bit more of the banking along there. It wasn't a particularly high bank, you know, probably, well, it wasn't even a metre high and only maybe three metres wide. And it was really just to keep out thieves and vagabonds more than anything else. And Edward III, oh, his lordship is just investigating a hole there. <laughs> uh, Edward III, uh, he hunted in this area in uh, 1366, and a lot of the repairs were made to the lodges, and one was actually referred to as Hounders Down, and that could have been this one here, because there is a settlement called Hounds Down to the, to the northeast. So again, we've probably just come a couple of weeks too late to get the benefit of the uh, the colours, uh, those autumnal colours on the leaves, but what it does mean is you've got this beautiful carpet of brown leaves on the ground. It's lovely to walk through, it really is. But yeah, definitely, uh, in fact, just over on the, uh, the far side, I can see evidence of a corner of a bank there. As I mentioned before, there are a fair few of these dotted around the New Forest. There's Church Place at Dennywood, the churchyard at uh, Slodden Enclosure, Studley Castle near Bramshaw Telegraph, just uh, as some examples. And the reason why it's got church in the name um, and a, a lot of other of the lodges similarly have uh, a connection in the title of church is that in the past folk would often assign that name to unexplained earthworks and the mistaken belief that uh, it had something to do with uh, William the Conqueror possibly destroying uh, whole villages and churches when he created the New Forest. Although historians suggest that uh, probably didn't happen. And the other thing about these lodges, some historians uh, cast doubt as whether or not they were royal, uh, they may well just have been um, modest uh, lodges for forest keepers. Well, I'm glad we found that lodge. I think we've ticked most of them off now, and that one wasn't too hard to find. So we've continued along some cycle tracks, uh, now passing post 387, we now start heading south again. Now at post 374, uh, if you want a short walk, you could just carry along uh, in that direction, that'll take you, well, to the original entrance that we came in at. But we are going to go slightly off piste, as it were, uh, heading westwards down this track here. And we're, ooh, <laughs> you've probably heard a, a horn on a train. We're going to cross a track very shortly. And that's good news. It means we don't have to worry about waiting for a train to go by.
people have just crossed over the railway line. <laughs> it's the uh, main uh, southwestern line that runs from London Waterloo all the way to Weymouth. So that train's on its way to Ashurst Station, I think it's the next stop, and it's just probably come from uh, Bewley Road. Fortunately, they do sound their horn, so uh, that makes crossing the track here a little less dangerous. <laughs> I've come across this really peaceful spot. The sun's come out again, a very open area, and I can just see some deer in the distance. Now, I'll, try, <laughs> I'll point the camera around. I'm looking directly at the sun, unfortunately. I might have to get my Canon camera out and use a zoom and see if uh, it'll come out, but it might be a little bit hazy, but a lovely sight and the ponies there. Speaking of ponies, if I slowly pan round, there's three here with their winter coats. Uh, but you can see the one in front of me, look at its tail, you'll see that it's, uh, it's got a pattern on it. And uh, where are we? December. So two or three months ago, it probably would have been involved in the pony drift and uh, we'll see some um, a pony pound later on. And uh, this pony is, uh, it's been marked. Um, all the ponies on the forest are owned by commoners and uh, the commoners have to pay a, an annual fee. I think it's 24 pounds a year for a pony. Um, it, that all goes to help with the running of the forest. And um, to show that uh, the, the fee has been paid, when the pony is captured, uh, in the pony pound, the adjuster will uh, cut its tail in a certain pattern. Each adjuster has their own pattern and that shows that the, the fee has been paid. And they call it a marking fee because the pony has been marked. And basically the pattern will eventually grow out over the next 12 months or so in time for next year's drift and it'll be ready to be marked again. Well, just crossing over a stream and this actually is the, uh, the Bewley River, which is uh, eight miles long and uh, used to be known as the River X. Its source is about two miles to the west of here from a spring in, in someone's back garden at Lyndhurst and it flows out to sea at uh, Bewley. And the entire river and the riverbed is owned by Lord Montague of Bewley. Well, as regular viewers will know, I do like boundary stones. And I found one on a very old 1897 map. There was one showing, but it doesn't show on a current ordnance survey map, but it is still here just behind me. And there it is over there. It's actually on private land, I think. Um, looking at a current map, there's a, a little area of land around Home Farm and Ashurst Lodge. So I'm guessing that it's actually outside of the, the new forest. So I'm not hundred percent sure, but Wow, that's uh, certainly the stone there. I'm pretty sure it's a boundary stone. It's in pretty good condition anyway. Oh, it's made my day. Well, I've now uh, come out into quite an exposed area. I've had to switch the microphones because it is quite windy. So I've got the, uh, the road microphone with the big fluffy dead cat on it. Now behind me here is a quite intriguing earthwork. So before I tell you about it, I better tell you what actually is here first. It's a uh, well circular about 100 meters in diameter and it covers about 0.3 hectares and there are some ramparts about a between a meter high a meter and a half high and three meters wide with an external ditch which is about three meters wide about a meter deep. There's an entrance on the eastern side and on the northern side the rampart utilises the natural scarp down to the, the river, which we've just seen. Um, it doesn't have an obvious ditch on that side. And there's a mound on the southern side, which is about 11 metres in diameter. So the question is, what is it? <laughs> well, Historic England have it listed as an Iron Age fort, and I believe it's a, a scheduled monument. Trouble is, it doesn't really look like a fort. It doesn't look as though it's big enough for one. And most, sorry, another train gone by. 
most um, Iron Age forts are built at the top of a hill. Uh, this one is, I say, quite open. I mean, if I was going to build a, an Iron Age hill fort, I, well, I wouldn't build it here. Anyway, about two years ago, some archaeologists came and did some investigations here. I think they were from Bournemouth University. And indeed, um, just panning round, I think they dug a trench round about here, just in front of me there. Well, they didn't find a great deal, but what they did find was some charcoal, which they understood to be man-made. And when they carbon dated it, it came up with a figure of between 3347 BC and 3087 BC. Well, the Iron Age was what? Uh, 800 BC to 400 BC, something like that. So their findings suggest that there was some sort of human activity in these parts way back in Neolithic times, which is a lot earlier than most people uh, had uh, previously understood. Fascinating stuff. For my own observations, I would say there is a, a drove road that goes by here. Um, I wonder if it might have been a, something like a, a, a cattle or livestock enclosure. Who knows? But uh, there's certainly some more investigating to be done by the experts to make absolutely sure. Interesting that if you look back on a, a very old map of uh, 1897, uh, it is listed down there, but they've got supposed fort, so they may have had some doubts about it even way back then. Well, just looking back, that's the uh, the Iron Age fort, and then this sunken track that I reckon must be pretty ancient, looking at the sides of the banks. But you do get some tremendous views from up here. Just looking across, I can just about make out the spire of the church at Lindhurst and then just panning round that's uh, Mackley Wood over there and then again panning round I can just about make out in the very very far distance the towers of the Forley oil refinery. We're just a little bit further on from the Iron Age fort are these two Bronze Age barrows a slightly smaller one in front of me, you can uh, still make out the ditch that goes around it. And there's evidence of robbing or excavation on the top. There's a little dip. Probably the Victorians, they uh, were prone to doing that. And then just to the west of it is the second barrow, slightly larger. In fact, you can make out the ditch much more easily on this one. And again, at the top, there's the indentation of where the uh, excavation has taken place. Well, this is a fascinating little pond on our homeward leg here, because if you look on a, an 1897 map, it doesn't show. Indeed, uh, it doesn't show on a 1955 map either. Now there was a chap called Arthur Cadman who was deputy surveyor in the New Forest from I think it was 1959 to 1968 and he was responsible for establishing a number of duck ponds throughout the New Forest uh, for ducks obviously and also other birds. I wonder if this was one of his. It just seems a, an odd place to have a pond because um, yeah, it's not as if the livestock need it because the, the river's literally, you know, 100, 150 yards away. So it could be one of his, or it might not. I might be talking absolute rubbish. <laughs> oh, just about across the Bewley River for the second time, but we've got a rather magnificent uh, three arch bridge to go over. And here you can see it's uh, ideal for the uh, livestock as a watering hole. Now it's a little bit chilly today to ask Logan to test it out for dog dip purposes. <laughs> that would be a little bit too cruel. Well, just before we cross the railway for a second time, we've got a very impressive Victorian bridge this time, so a little bit safer. But just down to my left, there's a, a pony pound, which regular viewers will know. There's a fair few of these on the forest, and uh, they're used well, primarily 
during the annual pony drift roundup in September of each year, but does get used at other times of the year as well. And the ponies will get corralled into here and the adjusters can check them over for their health and uh, put reflective collars on and um, mark them. And if any need to be taken off the forest for, for selling and what have you, it can be done easily here. You do get some fascinating landscape around these parts. That's the, the railway bridge that we've just come over. And in front of me here, this is actually man-made. This is the remains of a, an old sand pit that's now just grassed over. <laughs> some noisy birds around here. Okay, so that's the very last stretch back to the car. If you wanted to be adventurous and add another maybe mile onto the walk, you could um, circumnavigate these woods that are in front of me here. That's the long down enclosure. But Logan and I rather fancy a pie and a pint of the happy cheese in Ashurst. So we're kicking on. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a, a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And if you're watching this before Christmas, we hope you have a, a wonderful, peaceful, festive period and a very prosperous new year. That reminds me, I need to get my lottery ticket. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. <laughs> I don't know. I think you look quite fetching in that. I don't think he's impressed. <laughs>